and with me, uh, one of my favorite musicals, and if you lived through the 60s, 70s and that, you know all about hair, and you guys are too young to know anything about that. How, how are you handling this play? <laughs> because it's, it's about Vietnam, it's about, there's so many things that are involved in this, and it's a kind of an awakening. We have three cast members, so yes. tell us a little bit. We'll start with you, Catherine. Okay, well, um, we're uh, very lucky in our generation that we don't have to deal with the, well, there is still a draft. Men still have to have draft cards and things like that. But, um, and we still have to deal with the same sort of issues where in Vietnam men were being shipped off sort of like and Shark it's Afghan, and, yeah. yeah, like Shark Week. And mm -hmm. um, so we have to deal with those emotions. And we blocked the final scene of the show and all of us in rehearsal were just sobbing. So it still resonates with us, even yeah. though we're much younger than the show. So it's a beautiful production. I, you know, I wish we could say it was just historical, but no, it, mm -hmm. it's historical, but it, it has the messages of today as well. History is doomed to repeat itself, unfortunately. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. So let's introduce who we have here. We have with us, and I, I don't know if I've got you in the right order, Cody Karpner. That's you, uh, Cody. I'm sorry, at the yes. end. And then we have Will Heatley right next in the middle there. Yep. And uh, it's always nice to be in the middle, you know. Yeah, yeah. I love the attention. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, Will, what do you play? And, and tell us about your part. Uh, I'm playing the role of Claude in the show. Is he the guy in the military? Yes, yeah, yeah eventually. Um, and one of the things that I found uh, doing research about Claude is the transformation that he goes through from being young and naive into being accepted into the group, and then finally um, slowly succumbing to the to the conservative America and the pressures of his parents and some other factors that play into him eventually uh, joining the military. And Your part drafted. really has a big transitional. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. At you know, at the very start of it, he's he's all about being young and free and you know chewing bubble gum and all this stuff and um, as he sort of you know comes to a turning point especially at the end of act one uh, it starts to dawn on him that he doesn't know where he wants to go and that's really you know that explains the title of that song well and, and the thing is not only is this fabulous music it has a fabulous story yes yeah. it's very good the first time I saw hair at, at Proctor's believe it or not uh, I don't even know how many years ago it was. Well, Janice will tell us. Yeah, <laughs> but um, she's coming on. <laughs> it was it was music that um, my grandparents listened to, and my parents listened to, and I my parents took me because they thought it was something that I should see and you know be a witness to because Good it's for them. It's really Good for them. It's really timeless, and you know when I was as young as I was when I saw it, I didn't really think about it that much. But after doing the research now being able to be a part of such a production as this, um, I really get a sense of the history and how timeless it really is and just the th thematics, it never stops. No. So that's Cody, why I love it. what are you taking away from this? Oh, wow. And what is your part? Uh, my part is Woof. Um, okay, he's one of the main characters. He's yeah. one of the main characters and uh, his role is to really play out the, uh, the drug culture that was so much a part of the late 60s. Um, the sexual revolution that was happening. Um, the, the pill was just, ha had just been invented and that was just a thing. So now women had the right to do um, with their bodies what they could, what they wanted to. They had to. control. They had control. And, um, and there was just this great overwhelming feeling of love among the tribe and among the hippie culture and so that I like the word tribe because yeah. it became a tribe didn't it well, the, that, the group yeah, yeah. yeah. historically yeah. Um, since the first initial production of hair the the cast the group on stage has been called the tribe oh. so um, throughout throughout each production each tribe takes on its its own we've name. got some photos of the tribe yeah. I think too yeah. Yeah. Yes. which um, we'll be yeah. showing yeah, each, each tribe takes on its own name, and we're the Mohegan tribe, and we're mm -hmm. taking after some of our local yeah. um, tribes here in the area. And That's we a great are, shot. We are a family. Oh, there we are, yeah. <laughs> we're a family. And, yeah. um, but that happens with so many <clears throat> shows. Mm -hmm. You become a, more, some more than others, and this seems to be one of those more than others. We made a yeah. big effort to do that, to yeah. become comfortable with each other on stage, because we are, in fact, getting naked. <laughs> So, uh, some of us, not yeah. all of us, yeah. Um, yeah. but uh, so we, we all took it very, um, we 
understood how important it was for us to be comfortable with each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In a different way. Yeah, in your own skin, I guess that. Yes, literally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> literally, 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 literally and figuratively. <laughs> uh, absolutely. absolutely. So, what age group? Um, to, to see the show, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I would probably say that. Um, it can be as, as young as 16 because I think that's the point where as a young adult you start to have an awakening in um, you know what you want to do with your life. And oh, I don't know. I would say a little younger maybe. The music is so beautiful. Yeah, the music the, is beautiful. The um, drug references and sexual references are so, even as adults, you don't catch all of them. Yeah. But the, the music is beautiful, like Aquarius. I'd say a mature people. high schooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mature yeah. high schooler. <laughs> mature, I don't know, mature 12-year-olds? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> we, we definitely get well, that. If you're yeah, daring. If you're have, daring. One of the things with uh, a, a play with, about social issues and that, Kids really have to have a perspective, mm -hmm. and at 12, I'm not sure that the perspective is there to understand what's happening. How old were you? I was, I was 11 when my parents took me to see well, it. There you go. Oh, I just wow. shot that off. I'll, 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 I'll be honest with you. A lot of when I saw it the first time, a lot of the themes that were present, I really didn't take into account because. From a historical point of view, I wasn't really familiar. Like you didn't, I knew, I didn't know about the draft. Maybe right, you didn't yeah. know well, about I, things. I like knew the that. Vietnam War was a thing because you know I'd been to D.C. and I've seen the big monument. Yeah. But other than that, I didn't really know about um, how much feeling and heart went into it. And well, and the, the problem with the Vietnam War, if we can look back at history, it was not really accepted, mm -hmm. even though there was the draft and we had to send our our, our brightest and, and, and great greatest youth out to fight a war that the U.S. really, uh, right. the, not the U.S., but most people right, yeah. did there was not a, there support. Was a sentiment, there was a sentiment, an overwhelming sentiment that our tribe really embodies. The uh, running tagline in the show is um, protesting against the war. Yeah. And, you know, there's the big scene where we burn our draft cards. And, and here Claude had to and go. And Claude doesn't. Mm -hmm. And he, he has yeah. to go. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there are these boys in high school, 17 year olds, you know, uh, about to graduate, they're 18 year old buddies, um, they're off to war. Um, and that's, they didn't have a choice about it, and they never no, came back. No, that's how the draft was. Mm -hmm. It was like, it, you know, and it got so that, you know, you had these plans about what you wanted to do with your life, and then pretty soon you're snatched up for two years or three years or Forever. eternity if you don't get back. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, you know, yeah. and uh, it was it was a, a, a kind of a really bad situation, but Hare kind of brings that to light and yeah. talks about how people, how kids or mm -hmm. the youth, you know, the San Francisco and the hate yeah. Ash yeah, Ashbury, yeah. and all of those. Uh, things that came together at that time. Where does this play, t uh, play take place? We have it in a New York City subway. Okay. Um, and so we have a lot of levels that we get to play with on the stage. Oh, now you always do that. You have such <laughs> a yeah, we, we like that. Set yeah. we, like, yeah. we, like, we like our playgrounds. And who, who, who did the set? Uh, Sharon Wemple okay. was one of the people, and Bob Farkasen. Okay, oh, oh yeah, you got good people we do. working we on that. We do, we have wonderful yeah. people. Costume, did, were you able to find enough uh, tie-dyed stuff? And Believe oh. it or not, Boho Chic is really in right now, mm. so a lot of us ended up <laughs> buying a lot of you our costume pieces. You just went and pieces. got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Found it at the mall. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so great. In the last few years, there's been a resurgence of the hippie style. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Um, with uh, a, I, you know, I have one of those peace necklaces. I should have worn it today. Totally. <laughs> Where are we gonna come see the show? I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear it when I go. Yeah, the old, you know, big thing with a piece on it. I couldn't get rid of that one. I tell you. Well, it's and, coming back. And that's yeah. from that time. See, so. Yeah, yeah. The cost. The, the, <laughs> it's an original. <laughs> the, the cost. Yeah, the costumes are absolutely brilliant. I think one of the best things about it is that they're so free flowing, and that there's not a set thing that people are wearing. Like. You'll have people wearing massive amounts of fringe, and there's tie dye, and there's knitting. Could you get a little bit creative with it? Oh yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, you you've got a person coming on stage looking like a Jackson Pollock painting. Oh my and, god! And, then, and then you'll just look at them, and you'll be flabbergasted. You're like, whoa! Well, look at that, <laughs> all over the place. As long as they don't come out looking like Picasso's. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, right. We're uh, uh, we're going to encourage you to go see here. It's it's a nostalgic play, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. It's running from March 11th through the 20th. You have two weekends to see it, and don't miss it because uh, it doesn't come around that often. No. 
them. And it's one you're going to love. I can guarantee you'll be saying a lot, but don't sing too loud. <laughs> <laughs> the audience doesn't like that so much. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you for being here, uh, Catherine. Of course, it's always great to see you. Thank you. And uh, Cody, it's good to see you too, and Will. Thank as you very well. much. Will in the middle. Yeah. Good. Will in the middle. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs>